Okay, so in this game here, looking at learning chess right from the start again. Um, never mind looking at the ratings, you know, it's, we're all beginners in the game of chess. So if I can go back to the beginning again, the start of the whole thing, to understand why I'm doing moves, etc. So the knights obviously can go here, can go here. So why not challenge this pawn? We do know the bishop potentially is probably going to come here just to try and upset the apple cart type thing. But that's us understanding what the pieces can do. And as a beginner, it's understanding what your pieces can do. What are their main challenges? What are their weaknesses? Excuse me. And also then, what are the what are the actual strengths on the board? Without any pieces on the board whatsoever, what are the strengths and weaknesses of the squares on the board? So it's a lot to take in, but when you first look at a game of chess, yeah, well, I know I kind of, I kind of was mesmerized by, oh, the pieces can go to this space and they can go to that space and they can go to the other space. And you're just constantly looking at the strengths of the pieces rather than really looking at, well, what are their actual weaknesses? Our strength, I suppose, is just gab gathering up this pawn here you could lock down the center, but it's not going to be very interesting for you because the head of the snake is just going to get snapped up. So I think we're just going to capture simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically. Now there's a lot that goes on under that word strategically, which can muddy the waters if you don't understand what strategically means. In my head, strategically means something that gives you either an advantage or keeps you safe from a disadvantage or it's a viable move that really is going to give you a complete overhaul of the opponent so an advantage so that's the strategy the strategical aspects are really just about those two key things really trying to block off the opponent's advantages if they've got any and also promoting your own advantages if you have any advantages and the whole strategical idea behind the game obviously is to checkmate the king secondary under that is to remove high level pieces from the board the better case is taking pieces off the board with pieces that are lesser rated than that particular piece so like a pawn taking a knight um, some may go a knight taking a bishop because they t treasure the bishops so this opponent's really taking their time they're probably doing their own stream or whatever and um, so in essence we could just capture this knight because the process in our head goes position checks captures threat support blocking then position again in a long play game you have that time to think about that type those types of um concepts in a faster play game you will have had to have practiced those quite regularly to really just get them as a secondary type thing so we're going through this position that we're not really happy with. We can play it, but it ends up, it can be advantageous, but at the same time, it could also just end in a draw, basically. So we're attacking a piece that is unprotected with the bishop. So position, position's okay, checks, and we re reframe the word check now, not just to have a check on the king, because you don't always have a check on the king in the early part of the game. So what we say is we'll put a check on a piece, preferably a higher piece, as mentioned before. Um, but a check on a piece helps you to sort of s select particular movements. So position... Okay, our position is okay, so then putting a check onto the pawn, treating it like I'm putting a check on the king in a sense, then it's captures, and then any threats, 
support blocking so this is going to be pretty painful especially if we what's the word now it's worse when you're playing a long play game and the, the opponent's playing real slow calculated and then you end up in a bad position so you have to play the game all the way through with a bad position it isn't really nice my next steer thing is to then put a fret on this pawn so that the rook is kind of held to ransom and is having to hold the pawn to um, you know protect the pawn one or two things can happen very rarely you see that more often you'd see the pawn pushing maybe to this square even as well but more often they do a two square thing with the pawn so that would be my fret does it improve my position it's not a strong thing I could go and castle because at the end of the day they'll be chomping at the bit to get their bishop here but that is easily defendable by a smaller piece the pawn can push up but I'm also wanting to get my knight developed as well but I don't think there's any point putting the knight there just yet because the bishop can come here x-raying through to the king So I think I'm going to bring the bishop here, like this. X-raying through to the pawn, putting a fret on the pawn. Usually then you see the knight coming here, because obviously the rook is protecting the pawn at the minute. So they're going to want to make space to actually castle. They may go for the temporary thing here, like we said, and we'll just block off here. But no times out of ten, it's the knight that comes out. But we're trying to improve our position a little bit at a time. It's one of those positions that really doesn't warrant, doesn't give you, yeah, doesn't give you much strength because he's attacking the pawn here. So if we then brought the knight up to defend, this is when the bishop comes out with a proactive situation. Because then they're going to end up doubling our pawns. So I'm actually going to castle. So the knight can take the pawn. Oops. Television just came back on. So they'll be wondering why you're giving the pawn up. So we're going to be a pawn down, but we do like to play a pawn down. So it's overextending a piece. It's not yet gone on castles, not any major threats that we can put into place here. But we're looking to improve our position. We've got two pieces developed already, and then obviously we can come out and develop another piece. So they'll feel good that they've taken a pawn, and then obviously then taken the knight, but they've not developed any of their other pieces. It's a kind of a strange way of playing, but it's like playing gambits. Yeah, you're giving pawns up um, just so that you can improve your position on the board. And that's what we're kind of doing here, strategically. Getting that piece to move more than once so that they're not developing the bishops, they're not getting castled. With a player that plays like this, you know, really slow, really calculated in a long play game. It's nice to do these types of moves because they have that time to look and go, well, there's definitely no benefits to them actually giving that pawn up. So why can't I take it? You know, so these things you have to consider with the human psychology. Why do people do gambits in the first place? You know, in the early part of the openings, it's so that they can win that tempo. These are different versions of gambits. It might be something that's already in the system, I don't know, but um, for me, this is why we're doing this type of thing. And as you can see, they're taking a lot longer working out, well, is it worth it? And they've actually not taken. Not taken because obviously they're a bit wise to the losing of tempo. So now they've probably gained the tempo 
by actually doing the pawn move, but they've not developed any major pieces. What are they concerned about? Probably concerned about the bishop putting a check on the king, but that was easily defendable anyway. What else is this pawn champion? It's championing these key squares here. So we could come here, and obviously then the bishop is going to be coming here, and also that pawn is covering this key square, so we can't go and challenge the knight and get to this beautiful square here. So all of that, with all that said, I think the knight is coming to this side, because then if the bishop does come down, we can definitely just push the pawn onto it. It's a very slow process, but obviously they want to go on kingside castle, so they're going to have to do this move. We have two pieces already developed, but it's just really slow. I don't like this type of opening per se. So we'll bring the knight out, seeing as they're not wanting to take it at this moment in time. There are movements for the knight to try and stealthily work its way through. But it looks like um, they've got something sewn up because they've moved really fast. So now we've got to look at the situation in terms of what's going to improve our position. If we bring the bishop here, does it really? It's going to push down again. Bishop's um, not stuck here. Obviously, we can push the pawn up onto their pawn, make their position a little bit worse for them in that sense. So we could do that. But the knight is um, acting as a bit of a saviour for that whole situation. Is it safer to bring the bishop back here? It's potentially still going to come down and push with this pawn. We can't take because his bishops protect him, but he's not actually gone and castled. So then we can push the pawn, but then he can push down onto the bishop. So is there something that we can do? We go here. He pushes down. We push up with the pawn. And that should be okay for us. Okay, so a nice position. Supporting the pawn yet again. Getting a nice position with the bishop. Protecting the pawn on the bottom. Waiting for this pawn to push. We can push onto this pawn here to try and open up more space. Our king's got company at the moment. But I think... It's definitely going to be time for the bishop to come out so they go and, can go and castle. So if they do do that, which I think they will, what's our next stage thing? Because in our heads, we're up movement on the board in terms of developing our pieces, but we have to make it count. So what are we... This pawn doesn't have any protection on it. It's just we cannot get to it, apart from the knight coming here. So I think the bishop probably is coming here to protect the pawn because it doesn't have anything on it. Which would make sense. So the knight's coming down for the bishop. So we don't have to have it taken. Yep, we could move it. Could move it to here. Obviously it's going to get challenged. So then we can bring it back down and then I think it's get challenged again and then it can come here and attack the pawn that has got no protection on. Obviously then this pawn can come and defend and then we can push on to the knight or well not, maybe not with that pawn but with this pawn here. So small potatoes, anything else? White square bishop, yep yeah, I think we'll do that with the expectation of one of these. I don't think that one, but maybe this, maybe this one. So constantly looking at the back end, we're not actually focusing on targeting or hitting the opponent with anything. But what we're looking at doing is improving our position for those targeting. As we mentioned, potential for this and then sitting here, then we are attacking this pawn, then this pawn drops and then we can attack the knight. But it may just go for a simple exchange of the bishop. What do we do then? Do we continue with this or do we take the bishop off the board? If we take the bishop off the board, we get the 20 points because the king can't go on castle. Just 
just always remembering that when we're targeting here, this knight is actually defending. This is why putting a pawn onto the knight. So they're going for the process that we've said. So we'll just bring it here. We're attacking and we are looking to attack the knight. They're probably going to look to push this pawn to actually get onto the bishop rather than supporting this because the knight is supporting at the moment. So it's a twofold thing pushing this pawn up because once they do that then it gives space for the bishop to move back if need be. Whew. So I hope I'm making myself clear with this sort of, not simplicity, but the way that we you try and calculate as a beginner, just nice and simple. You've no, no, I don't think anybody can really teach you how to play chess. They can guide you and show you some principles and concepts. But when it comes to you actually playing the game, it, you have to make your own decisions as to how you uh, mobilise. And these are simple concepts, basically. You know, is my position okay? Can I put a check on a piece? Can I put a check on the king? Um, well, can you put a check on the king first? But in the early part of the game, this is where the, the struggle is. In the early part of the game, it's putting a check on a piece and then putting more pressure on that piece as you can develop uh, if you can't take it straight away get more pieces on that piece if it's an important piece that's going to give you an advantage there's no point in putting a load of pieces on a piece that really is not going to help you at all so as we can see this game is kind of exploding already but i'm thankful so now the bishop is coming to protect the pawn yeah so in some way shape or form because obviously we're going to attack the knight like we said so they knew we were going to attack it but if the knight goes here then it's blocking the bishop from defending the pawn so we could take the pawn x-ray through doesn't look like there's anywhere the knight can go if he goes here he'll get taken if he goes here he'll get taken so the only place he can go is there but they might target something else of ours that's usually the shock factor in a beginner game where you think yes i've got it all sewn up but then they attack a piece of yours <clears throat> and then you either have to do something about that which then messes up your little kind of plan that you had so always be mindful that expect the unexpected and then you're not going to be as shocked and surprised so in this game here we've explained the majority of what we're attempting to do and what potentially the opponent was looking to do i mean obviously they've brought the bishop out we said it probably come in here to defend in the early part but it's brought itself here in the fianchetto bit but in any event even though the opponent's taking their time it doesn't mean that they're not finding the right moves it's just now because we've explained what we've done it's starting to unfold a little bit it's only a tiny pawn so if we do take we're up a pawn but so what does it really improve our position i don't think it's too bad a position because where we're sending the knight to it's probably coming here to attack but then we can take the bishop off the board for free so I think there's going to be castling going on. So we'll take the pawn as we've said, because that looks pretty straightforward. Always mindful that if he does move his knight, we'll take the bishop for free. But I don't think that's going to happen because they look like a bit of a thinker. So what's our next stage thing? I think it's just waiting to see what they do. Um, if they were moving fast, they'd probably move the bishop knight to take here. Yeah, but... Um, I don't think that's going to happen. So we did say castling was probably going to happen, I think. They do need to castle, I think. This white square bishop is not... Oh, oh, he's moved it so that he can actually defend. See? I didn't even spot that he could go that way. I had focus of him going this way, didn't I? So always remember, you don't have to take a piece just because it's there. I'm probably going to take the piece, but I'm just looking now to see if there's anything better. 
don't really think there is and I don't want to lose the momentum because if I move the bishop then it gets our pawn here and it's on our rook. I think we've done good enough to actually just take the bishop off the board. So the knight takes on a dark square. We could push on to this pawn here to see what it wants to do. There's no more dark squared threats towards our king. And yet again, I mean, they don't have to take, you know, they could just leave it. So I'm going to push the pawn. I don't think I need to overthink anything else. I'm fairly comfortable with our position here. Is there anything? I think this pawn is doing a, a, a bang up job because it's protecting these squares here. So if we challenge, trying to aim towards this area here, doubling the rooks up, keeping it simple, not too arty. So we're attacking a the head of the snake. We're quite consistent with attacking the head of the snake. But we have to still be mindful. He does have like diagonals and stuff. He's got the rook, that rook coming here. This king's not castled as yet. So we do say trying to castle early. Well, not early, but get your king to safety is usually best. Some players can play like this though. So, you know, it's like a knights on the rim. Doesn't mean that they're dim all the time. And like the castling aspect, some players can play without castling. So you just have to be mindful of it take advantage of it if you can but don't just think oh well he's not castled so I'm winning so the longer term benefits so far I mean we've got rook that can come here can look to double up maybe here because at the minute there's Fianchetto type thing, or maybe getting the bishop in the centre a little bit or something. Because he doesn't have to take, so if he don't take, do we push up or do we take it? Hmm. Still a few things to think about. But I don't want to overthink it now, because um, when you overcalculate, sometimes it messes you up and then you do a knee-jerk reaction. So this person is a definite good thinker, which is good. It's a long play game. And this is helping me try to see something. I can't really see major weaknesses at all. Well, I can, all the things I can see, they're not linked up, but it's being able to take advantage of that, you know. It's all right going, well, the rooks aren't linked up and the bishop's not out in the game. But if there's nothing clear... You're not winning. The eval bar might say otherwise, but my personal evaluation bar is going, well, this is still still even Stevens. We're plus one, but so what? Until I'm happy that I think there's a clear way in, then it's a draw at the moment. Okay, so they've made a move and they've actually captured the pawn. So they had a massive, massive think on this particular move. So what I don't want to do is end up in some sort of magical fork. So yeah, um, don't want to fall into a fork of some sort. I mean, his knight can come here and it can come there if our rook is in this position. Does that give them an advantage at all? Because we are facing this pawn, but I don't think he's going to give us tempo enough to double the rooks up. So once we take, then do we drop back, not onto a white square, maybe here. Once the knight comes and attacks, then potentially bringing the rook across here. Did think they were going to go on castle, but like I said, some players like to play without castling. So he has attacked, so there is options rather than going back, going up. But he's coming down here, maybe, well, the bishop's protecting. So rather than going back, going up. And then can his knight still get us again? I don't think they can, can they? Let's go up with the idea of doubling here. As you can see, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. 
doubling the rooks will give us strength but on a dark square he's got a white square bishop so that can't hassle us only one that can is this funky knight or the king coming down to attack So he's going to want to make space. He might even just bring the rook here so that then at least he's um, protecting. But then we can take this pawn if that happens. So maybe the king comes here first to win a tempo. Then we come here. But then his rook drops rather. Yeah, because it's still protecting the pawn here. So that's the type of thing that's going to happen. But then we can push the pawn because our bishop will be on the rook. Ah, he's bringing this rook into the play. Looks like he's spent a lot of time thinking about that. So, going to continue the movement. So, he's going to drop here. So, he does drop. Now, I think it's something to do with this knight. If we get this knight across. And then across. And then here, putting a two on one there. I think we're going to go with that movement because the knight at the minute doesn't need to be there and I think it needs to get a little bit more active. You have to be careful sometimes when you're blocking your own rook. But all I can see is his knight moving here, maybe there. It's not got a check on my piece so I think I'm going to get the knight into the game as best possible could get it here to then put a bit more weight on like I said if this rook wants to get involved we can push this pawn up and the bishops attack him but then I suppose it can come here so it's um, a slow build up always got to remember the opponent is in the game too they haven't castled as yet so in a way we are trying to make them pay the price because if the knight comes here what is it also on it's also on this pawn so it's attacking two pieces so in essence if he did come and defend then the knight can just take so that's going to be a bit meaty but we have to wait and see what the opponent's doing we as humans we get so focused on our own attacks that we almost think it's a bit of a cheek that the opponent even thinks about attacking us so i'm sitting back now i think i've got my one two as best possible which is my one two calculation but does my opponent have a one two calculation against us i think he's gonna fight back by attacking the bishop but the pawn can defend, so we could still continue with our knight move. Attacking both the pawns. So if the bishop comes and defends, then that might be worse. Okay, we'll pause it again. Don't know actually what actually happened to my screen last time. That was a bit weird. Let's do it again. Hmm, what if it's crashing? Okay, so they've made the rook move. That wasn't in my roller decks type thing. So we did say the knight was coming here. It does look like an odd move, doesn't it? I don't think I'm... Um, odd doesn't mean that it's not workable. Okay, knight. It's on a dark square, so it's not a bishop's turn. Knight comes here, it's attacking both these, like, like we said. I think we still continue with this. Where's my um, web thing gone again? I 
think it's crashing, you know. Where, I can't see it. Where is it? It just went hiding in the background. Let's see if it's working again. Yep. Right, okay, so it's back on. Right. So I think I am going with this move. Some he's got one, two. It's obviously going to bring this here or maybe here the rook. But like I said, we could take this pawn, so it's probably coming here with the rook. Our knight is blocking our pawn from pushing up there at the minute, but it is on this pawn. So the bishop is probably coming here. That's why he's moved the rook. Ah, yeah. That's why he's moved the rook so the bishop can protect this pawn. But if the bishop comes there to protect the pawn, does he not lose tempo on this pawn? So we could take. Oh, it's getting jazzy now. It's getting jazzy. The knight's gone back. Didn't even put that in my roller decks, did I? Now he's attacking our knight. And he's protecting the pawn here. Oh, wow. That is amazing. None of what I said has occurred. I thought I was building up a nice attack and the opponents just sat there knowing full well what to do. Oh, that's amazing. We do have two pieces on here, which is the rook and the knight. He's only got the knight. So if the knight takes and the knight takes, the rook takes. And then we're on his bishop as well. So I'm actually going to take, because we're on his rook as well. Never feel like you're falling into a trap, but it does look fairly safe. Strategically, it seems sound. We've got two pieces on the pawn. If the knight takes, then we can take back. And then we're also on another piece. It's just that his king is probably going to come and attack our rook. So it does take, so we're going to take and then just move the rook back again, I suppose. If the king comes and attacks, or the bishop attacks. Could go this way as well. So this is a different kettle of fish now. I'm having to change the pattern thought process that I had in my head now. This has not ended up the way that I expected. And that's the thing. Expect the unexpected. Oh, the king's come, like we said. So we did say we're just going to go back. Does the picture look different? The bishop can't do anything at the minute. Can't take the pawn because the bishop's there. So if we go and double up, then he, he brings his rook defending. Oh, sorry, drops it again, defending. And then we can push the pawn up maybe. Okay, let's go back. So there has to be an element of him dropping here. But then he gets the safety here because obviously the bishop is going to be on him. But then even if we push, that's the thing. We push, then he moves, then this pawn has got no protection on it. But then we do have the bishop coming here and putting a check on his king. And get that off the board. Hmm, it's looking a bit sketchy now, dude. Hmm. Yeah, nice play. Long play thinker. We're plus two at the moment. Again, that doesn't mean anything until I feel fairly comfortable with what's going to go on. Because he could easily get them back. So he's moved the king back to this position. It's not brought the rook down. So he's got two defending. Okay, we could push this pawn up if his rook takes, then we take this pawn. Then our rook's on the back rank. And it kind of activates the bishop to get to this square. But start. Uh, or we could go and attack the bishop again. But then it's looking like I'm going for a draw. Because his king's just going to come back here. And then we could go up with this rook. To do what? Attack this pawn. Interesting. That could be the case. 
We could do that, couldn't we? Go here, but this time I don't think his king's going to attack. I think he's going to do something with the bishop. Yeah, I don't think he's going to do it this time. No, I'm not the bishop, not that way. Because he'll lose that pawn. Yeah, so it goes with the bishop there. We have to bring it back. Or well, maybe we'll just go straight there, straight to here, rather than attacking the bishop and it doing its funky stuff. Because we're losing tempo, he's getting a 2 on 1 then with the bishop and his rook on that pawn. So he could do that anyway, couldn't he? So if we went here, then he brings his bishop with a 2 on 1. I'm trying to get my rook up here to take this pawn off, but all the while he's getting a 2 on 1 on it. Oh, well, don't like them apples. Don't like them apples. Hmm. Oh, somebody help me. If I go here, protecting the pawn, then he does have this, and his bishop long range attack. Oh my gosh, I'm overthinking, but those are all the nice positions they could get. Oh, Jamal, eh? If we come up. Come up. This bishop comes here. Two on one. We go there. His rook comes here. We push. He pushes. But he can't, well he can, but we'll take. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I like them apples at all. Can't even go there though, what am I on about? You just whip me off the board. We'll go here. Hmm. Oh, do we just go here? Comes there. We go here. So it comes across. Move the king. No, 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 no. If it goes across, we take the pawn. Keep forgetting that. Right, so. That's our trouble spot now. Hmm. That's our trouble spot. If we push the pawn, you'd think he would take, then we take. And he thinks about being clever. Oof, I'm taking as long as them now, aren't I? Interesting times. Wow. Well, well, well. There has to be something half decent that I can do. Still plumping for this, maybe getting an attack in this pawn, but... Mm. Yeah, I'm still plumping for this, but yeah, I think they If he comes here, don't forget this bishop thing, so I'm going to have to move the king anyway. So they're going to go for all these back rank type looking... Distance checks. Hmm. Do, do, do. And the worst thing to do as well is when you do your calculation and you explain the things that you have to be watch mindful of, and it still happens. It's attacking this pawn here. 
Damn, he's put a lot of thought into these things, hasn't he? He's put it on a dark square, but he's moved there dead fast, so he's protecting this square. What's this rook planning to do? Is it just a simple case that he's just attacking the pawn? Let's just move the pawn out of the way. Or is he readjusting somehow, somewhere? Just waiting for this. Just moved it. It's like preempting everything I'm doing. I'm wanting to come here to put pressure on this. We could push this pawn because he's blocked momentarily by the bishop. See if we can get an attack going because our bishop is not doing anything, it's just acting as a pawn. Am I missing something? What am I missing? Come on, push the pawn, but then it just moves his bishop. I don't think that looks, that's not a good move. That's not a good move. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Let me just step back from the picture. Step back from the picture. I bet you it's a simple operation and I'm just overlooking something so obvious. Just move the king. Push. Attacking his pawn. Push attack the pawn. He doesn't have to take. Can just push down. I suppose it gives us a little bit of a pushy pushy here. But if he does take, boom. Boom. And then Puts a two on one on the pawn here. Yeah, that's not going to work either. Interesting. What about just blocking it then? Putting it onto a dark square. Yeah. I'm going to have to do a completely non move. Hmm. Even got me doing the body shuffle now. So I don't know what the opponent's going to do because they're not doing anything that I've put in my calculations at all. <clears throat> Which seems to be a theme throughout our games, doesn't it? <clears throat> and it, it genuinely does explain why I don't go further than four because after that, really and truly, it's like, well, they might not even do the one, two that you've calculated. So you've wasted all your brain power. So then, as you could see, we had to do a whole recalculation again. It doesn't mean everything, anything's 100%, but we're attempting, I think. I'm not really that comfortable with my rook's positions. I know that the target in this area, but he's got like three pieces on there now. And now he's got this bishop that's acting like it's um, holding court all across the board. So I'm going to have to readjust. I have to mentally readjust and do something d totally different. Because I feel like I'm almost trapping this rook in because it doesn't have anywhere to go. So we have a poor majority on this side. But how much weight that carries, not too sure. If his bishop stays there, we have space to kind of mobilize the rook around onto the other side. What can it do really? It still meets this bishop, but it can get to here, putting pressure on this pawn. So that's the smallest of potatoes. That's the smallest of ideas. But once we move the pawn, it can just move the bishop. 
which is not ideal because then I suppose we can bring the rug behind but we're babysitting a pawn. Hey, there's the bishop somewhere, maybe it just goes and attacks the bishop. I'm on a white square with the rook. Oh, that don't look good. Bishop comes back. And we can come back here. Yeah, no. Not happy with that, not happy with that at all, but we need to get something going. And that is like an ideal position for one of our rooks. I don't know how we're going to get there. This doesn't work. Pawn takes me dead there. If we push this pawn, then we could push that pawn. So using the pawn majority, but if we did do that, I think this rook will just attack the bishop. If he went there, he just brings his rook across in readiness for us pushing onto here. Oh dear, let's get out clauses all over the place. I think he's um, wormed his way through to a draw, even though we're plus two. I cannot see. Oh, he's moved it already. He's moved it already. Damn. Can, can they hear me? This is weird. He's, oh my god, so if he's coming and attacking our bishop. Oh dear, dear, dear. Right, so we said we wanted to push the pawn up. His rook's not there now, but his rook can. It's got a bit of play here. So it's basically blocking off the area that we wanted to go to, isn't it? So if we push the pawn up. not too fearful of the attack now but I suppose in a way he can come and attack the bishop but I wasn't planning on taking the bishop anyway but if we push the pawn up then if he did do that then the bishop could take because our rook is defending this area and it maybe gives us tempo to try and get up here I don't know if that works so he's trying to get a check on our king, but the king can just bounce up, can't it? Okay, I think I'm going with this poor move because my rooks are just going to be stuck there forever. Yeah. What is this rook doing? So you're looking to attack here. There. So he comes down and attacks the pawn. That's going to be a bit annoying, isn't it? If he attacks the pawn. And I come here. Then the bishop attacks the rook. Then the rook comes down. And it's back into that position that we said, isn't it? So we could push, push, pushy type thing. <sighs> okay, let's go with that. <clears throat> so as be as beginners, um, <clears throat> if you're not used to if you're not used to things not going your way, um, probably now's the time to get into that practice of damn, it's going to be hard work. And when you play your easier games, then obviously they're pretty smooth, but. Um, if you're wanting to develop, you're going to have to really get knuckled into, well, the opponent's seen everything that I'm doing. What can I possibly do in this situation? And that will help you develop your own strategical methods as best possible. I mean, I'm trying my best to weave my way in with how trying to get some type of position i'm trying my best but there's potential for attacks coming across here but at the minute these pieces aren't working together but they can do quite fairly quickly do you know what i mean bishop coming here 
especially you know if I'm having to come here because the rook is defending but they are moves away but this is one of the key things that I said earlier on is that the worst thing that can happen is when you say you're aware of a, a, a position and you shouldn't get into that position but you still end up in that position anyway and you've tried your best doing whatever you've done but you still end up in that position I've said there's a potential threat area with this rook and this bishop hitting my king area I don't want it to happen but it looks like it's going to happen so I want to try and circumvent it as best possible without losing too many pieces I'm losing my voice so the rooks come and defended the pawn rather than attacking so I'm feeling a little bit better about that so it does mean we maybe potentially have tempo to come here I don't know you know because the bishop's actually blocking is there something with the is there a trick uh, no there isn't is there if I take his bishop his pawn takes rook takes then I lose all my pieces daughter damn Followers of, maybe we can come here and attack this pawn oh my poor pawn maybe I didn't need to move that pawn now oh my bishop's got loads of space as well could attack his bishop couldn't I but then if my bishop goes off then he takes the pawn here if I come across and attack this pawn what does it mean? It doesn't really mean a lot, does it? So a fancy business here. Pawn takes. Rook takes with a check. Do we lose the bishop for, bishop for nothing? Although it's like... Uh, well, we'll be up the exchange, wouldn't we? If the bishop went here like this, attack the pawn. Pawn doesn't have to take, though. So if we did take, bishop takes, no, nah, that's not going to work. He has to physically take it, doesn't he? So if he doesn't take, then the bishop can take the pawn here, but then his rook can take our pawn here. But then there's less pieces on this pawn, so then we could take that pawn attacking his bishop. And then the bishop takes, then the rook takes, then the king. Oh no, that doesn't work either. Why doesn't that work? There's three pieces on there because he's got three pieces himself. One, two, three. That's why it doesn't work. Okay, right. Let's get back into serious mode. Rook attacking the pawn. Don't really want to take it off the line because it. Take the bishop. Bring the rook here. The whole idea was about bringing the rook here to try and get it to here to there anyway, wasn't it? But if we go one, he can always come one attacking our pawn. That was our concern, wasn't it? This king's on a white square as well, but the damn bishop is not in a good position. He goes 1-1, one, one. do we just go attacking and he takes our centre pawn, so he's managing a bit isn't he, come across, I know, where you, I know you see where I'm kind of thinking of going and try to get his rook off there but I don't think that's going to work is it, it's not going to work like that. Okay, let's go for it. We mentioned this early doors. Let's give it a try. If he comes here, what do we do? Do we go back and be soft? <laughs> Don't really want to be soft because his bishop's just going to put go here. But I should really just go and attack the... Then he can just go there, can't he? Mm. But if he go, Yeah, but then he's still on our... This rook's a bit annoying, he's just eyeing up this pawn. 
Paul Bishop's not had any play in the game whatsoever. I feel so sorry for it. This is a proper long play. Oh no, I didn't. No, no, we didn't say exchanges and stuff, did we? Oh, we thought they were going to go with some cleverness. So if we went up just to here, and if it did take, then the pawn's elevated, but it's not really supported, but it's stopping the king from coming here. And if we simply take, the bishop's going to take, I think, isn't it? It's not the king. Although he's not going to be bothered now because I've already got one piece attacking there. Hmm. We are plus two, so where are the plus twos anyway? On the edges and one in the center. I don't know. I don't know. He's just going to sit there with his bishop all for the rest of the game. Mm. Go up. He's not forced to take, but if he does take, we take with the pawn. It looks drawish. It looks too drawish, doesn't it? Take king or the bishop, whichever. It's probably going to be the king because he don't want this pawn pushing up. Not that it's doing anything. Takes with the king, bishop goes and attacks his bishop. Bishop says, well, no, thank you. I'll just come and sit down here. We can't do because the king, if the king takes. Okay, we're plus two. Let's trade down. It looks like a draw to me. Which is a, it's not a shame. It's not a shame. It's not a shame. Can't beat yourself up. So as a beginner, you don't want to, you don't want to over egg. You know, you may feel that you've got a win just because you, maybe you've got two pawns up or even a knight up or, you know, a minor piece or whatever it is. But if the position isn't giving it to you, we're going to try and make it work, though. We're going to try and make it work. But there's a certain level I won't go beyond. And we will hopefully, fingers crossed. So I'm going to attack... So he can't move the bishop now because I was thinking he's going to be able to move it, but he's got to check on him. So if they take, then we're on his um, pawn. But the problem we've got is his king can just condense us in. This is why I'm saying it's probably a draw because he's just going to get the pieces back. He might even just leave the bishop there. But if he did, then we can take. If the pawn takes, then we can take his rook. So he's got to be careful. So I think he will take. Annoying thing is we're here. We are attacking this pawn. We're attacking this pawn as well. But his king comes here. So we take this pawn. And then he's... Yeah, okay. Let's do this. Let's just get it to the drawn state. I don't want the draw, but we shall see what happens. King comes and attacks. We take this pawn. Our rooks on the other side of the board blocked off, and we're not really in the game here. We're not in the game at all, so his rooks just going to come down and take our pawns here. Our king's not fast enough to go and protect them. Shabby times. Oh dear. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Yeah take so the rook is now out of the game in a sense rook comes here comes down to take these pawns damn it this pawn i can't keep this pawn and there's nothing i can do yeah i can put a check well what's that oh it's um release the pawn but my rook is kind of still it's funkily trapped because it can't get back into the center. I did think they were going to work here, but it looks like the rook is going to take. Um, I'm going to attempt to get across the other side. I know you see what I'm going to try and do. I need to try and get his rook off the board if I can. 
try and make the advantage I've got work for me, but I think the king's just going to move up. Or not move up. Uh, how can we get this rook off the board? Okay, let's just bring it down. So we're on removing of the rook strategy before it starts peeling off our pawns. We're plus three now. But it's so easily lost just from them just wrapping up pawns. So we need to focus on trying to get rid of this rook. Best way is to get a pin through onto the rook somehow with our rook. So we're on strategy trying to get rid of the rook. So all the move, all the movements hopefully are gonna be attempting to get rid of it. It's annoying, come on. But don't move too fast that we make a make make a mistake and then we give them the game. This is a true long play game. He's not playing it. He's not playing it. I mean, if we go up, we're allowing him to come down and down and down. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's go here. You never know, he might go there. Obviously he's not he's going to come here because he wants to get his king further down the board. again so the danger is the closer they get to our pieces they're going to wrap them up I don't want them wrapping them up come on and I don't really want to get a repetition or any, any sort so I need to bring my king into the game as well it's obviously not wanting to do that. This rook's going to come this side here. Oh, he's attacking the pawn. And is there anything? Is there any magic? It's just support. Keeping it basic. I'm keeping it as basic as possible. Just get the king up supporting. If he's looking to exchange, I'll gladly exchange, it's no problem. Has he got a rhythm with these pawns somehow? Oh, it's there. That's the one. All the places on the board the opponent had to choose from when they chose that one. Oh, how lucky is that? Damn. Ah. You would say the game's over now. I'm really pleased with that. Oh, and they've resigned. Quality game. Absolute quality game um, for showing the beginner psychology working on the strategies that we're working on, the concepts, the decisions that we made during the game, explaining all of the problems, the concerns, and the rationales behind the moves. You have to go through all of that. We're all beginners in chess. And hopefully this little demonstration has shown it isn't easy, but the more you practice, the more you delve into your evaluations and then you take action on your evaluations of your games, the better your decisions are going to be going forward. We ended up plus three pawns in this game just from selective choices that we made, which was strategically to remove pieces from the board um, in a strategical way.
So I'm really comfortable with that. Um, there was some touch points where it was getting a bit squinchy, but all in all, it did feel that we were managing it fairly well. I'm going to dare go into the analysis board as we do, just to check and just to confirm in our brains if there was any pluses or minuses in the actual movements. But bearing in mind, when you do computer analysis, don't beat yourself up too much because it is a computer. If you've got a good rationale for what you've done and the moves that you made and your opponent didn't make the best move out of that, then that's not your problem. I'm sure I've mentioned this on several occasions. That ain't your issue. Yeah. You've made your choice the best way you've made it from your calculation. So we're going to go through now. OK, obviously we're going through a lot quicker than what happened in the game. So we captured, captured and captured. OK, simplified. And like I said, I don't really like this type of opening because it does end up being kind of drawish in my in my recent experience. So we've developed the night now. I went, we went through all the explanations. We all we're going to do now is just have a look at what the computer is showing uh, in terms of the gauge bar. So it doesn't like that pawn push. And the knights come down attacking the bishop. Why does it keep stopping? Okay, so there, bishop now moving up to come back again, to come round, to attack the pawn. So it's only plus 0.3 type thing, nothing major. Like I did say though, at the very beginning of this type of opening, it used, it feels fairly drawish for me. Um, I don't really like it, but at least I kind of know how to operate around it a little bit. Uh, so they brought their Bishop Fee and Chateauing type thing. We did have a bit of concern about that particular move. Um, because obviously the knight doesn't really have much place to go because it's going to be blocking their pawn but it's only a pawn at the end of the day so they move with capture capture at the moment in time gauge bar is singing for us um, so that's a plus in a way and um, we felt that we were making appropriate decisions but even if the gauge bar wasn't on our side as we've seen before if I believe in my calculation, I'll challenge the um, evaluation on the computer. You have to be that firm with um, what you're doing in terms of your own development. I'm losing my voice. Uh, this this was really an interesting game. It went on for ages. <clears throat> so we pushed the rook up. And I want to see at this point here, because it was getting a little bit sketchy. And we were running out of attacking areas. And the position was looking a little bit squinchy for us. So I just want to see how badly it went down. So they bring their rook across. It was at that point where we were like thinking, I don't know what that rook move was, but um, we came through with our knight. So we could say it's um, plus 6.2 at the minute. So it's showing we're kind of out and out winning. Didn't feel like we were out and out winning. It felt we had to put a lot of work into our calculation to try and find a good move. So we're always concerned plus 6.2 is quite high really so we maneuvered the rook up I'm waiting for it to go dipping down at any stage now so we moved the pawn keeping it simple didn't want the bishop having a cheap shot then they moved their pawn out of the way we blocked up so it's plus three so we've lost about three points since we had the major upset around here early on so then they moved their rook across then we pushed this pawn. We wanted to get this rook across here at some point. It's not too dissatisfied with that, so that's quite pleasing to the eye-ish. I didn't, I didn't know what this rook move was, but I couldn't make. To me, I couldn't make it. It felt like I couldn't make it work. But I, all I know was I wanted to get this rook across here to try and cause some damage. And then they're going for the exchange and we ummed and ahed about it. But then it did look a little bit favourable for us-ish. But I wasn't too comfortable. I thought, oh, damn it, my rook's just going to have no play. Stuck in this corner here. So let's see if I was right. Still showing plus five. <clears throat> so that's quite good. And then they went for... I didn't expect that at all. I thought they were going to move their rook around it. Well... Maybe attack here, we could push up, then come back around again, start attacking my king area. Boom, boom, boom. In fact, yeah, it does say rook c8. Yeah, 
So then they come with this move here, it gives us plus 7.5. <clears throat> so it does give us space to actually get our rook out of the area. That's what we were concerned with anyway. <clears throat> I know the computer said something like G3 or some of the other. Yeah, but no, I didn't want to get my rook trapped in there. I wanted to, as you could see, try and get his rook off the board if I could. But they sensed that. So it's plus 7.3. Whoa, damn. So we move the rook down. And now we were in the mode, like we said, of let's get this rook off the board if we can. So I don't think it's going to change much now. And that was the, no, sorry, not that one. That was the key one of all the places of the, that they could move to. It's saying like A5, you know, something like that. But all the places they could move to, that was the ideal one. Brilliant game. Fantastic game. We're all beginners in chess.